everybody for um, showing up to the webinar. We really appreciate it. Um, we have David Cooley here today with us from UCLA, and I'll let him uh, do a little intro um, in a bit, but I just want to jump on and um, introduce the team. So I'm Olivia. I'm the lead college accessibility here at Fulfillment Fund. Um, so it's great to see some of your faces. Um, and as David mentioned, go ahead and turn your cameras on um, when we get started so we can go ahead and share our, uh, you know, the stories that we're going to be going over today. So uh, my name is David Cooley. I am a career and executive coach, and my full-time role is uh, the Director of Alumni Career Services at the UCLA Anderson School of Management. And I used to work for work right with Ali Mizell, who's on your team, and it was an honor working with her for many years. And uh, she first gave me a strong idea of what the Fulfillment Fund is all about. And so I know how special all of you are and lucky you are to be part of this group. So. Short version is you might think, well, what exactly do I do? What I do is work with people on a lot of what we're going to cover today. And a big part of it is prepping for interviews, um, telling your story, your unique story, whether it is uh, Guadalupe's or Brian's or Martin's. What is it that you talk about when you interview for a job and later in your career? What is it that you that you can say when people first uh, meet with you for a job? How do you impress them? And when you're looking to get hired for that next internship or job, what? how do you really start? And so today we're just going to start with that, tell me about yourself, right? And so let me ask you, what do you think is important to get across? What do you think you want to communicate in that intro? And that intro is usually that two minutes or one minute to start off the conversation. What's important? You just talk about anything or talk about something specific? What do you think? Oh, go ahead. Did I say go ahead? Just say it. Oh, I start off with skills and career interests. Good, good. And so what is it? And we're going to give you a chance to actually practice yours and, and other people here today, too. But what is it that you think that they're really looking for when they ask you? When they say, tell me about yourself, what, what are they looking for? Your experience. That's, that's exactly right. What you're telling is your unique experience that has some skills built into it or your education. Let's say you're a, a second year or a third year, you're a sophomore, a freshman, sophomore, whatever it is, whatever jobs you have are really important. I've ever, uh, you know, leading up to this stage of my life, I think I've had every possible job. When I was a teenager, I, I laid sod. Uh, I worked in a, a paper mill during the summers. I was a theater usher. I did a lot of different things. And you may think, well, those are just my, my high school jobs or something. But I think you're going to be surprised that whatever experience you have, whether it's babysitting or working at a restaurant counter or um, interning somewhere, it's all more valuable than you think. In fact, when I look back over my life, I say, those first jobs are actually really important, uh, establishing teamwork, trust, um, being able to articulate what needs to be done, solving problems. So if you think about it, when you say your intro, you're trying to give a quick little soundbite of who you are and what your skills are. And ideally, it's related to the job that you're targeting. Vanessa, great answers. So um, who else has an answer to yeah, your skills, your experience? What experience do you have? Absolutely. Jorge, that's that's perfect. You want to you want to build on that at all? Like, what else do you think that they're really looking for? Education. Yeah, Leslie, great. Yeah. Your objective, um, to a degree, but ideally, whatever your objective should be should connect to whatever that job you're interviewing for. Enthusiasm is right, Martin. Absolutely, they want to see your energy. They want to imagine you in that role. In fact, I've worked with thousands of people over the years. And I think the number one thing I say to people whether they have an MBA or a BA, whatever college they went to, whatever their education was, enthusiasm and some sort of skills and, and, and investment is, is half of what gets you there. What do you think is the number one thing that people get hired for other than skills? It's likability. Likability. Do they understand? And at Nazario, leadership is important too. These are all great L's. But what they do want to hear is likability is can they imagine you in the role? So when they say, walk me through your resume or tell me about yourself, you'll find that this question never goes away. I've worked with entry-level people, 
MBAs, executives, and heads of companies and presidents and CEOs, and they all get the same question. And why do they get it? Because it's your story. People want to hear your story. But what, they're, what they want to hear is, what they're really saying is, tell me your story, integrate a few accomplishments and characteristics in a likable way, and relate it to the needs of this job. So if they he hear likability, they see some leadership as uh, Nazario says, your ability to, and some character and your personality, you're already halfway there. And even the most highly educated PhDs and MBAs that I've worked with, they don't necessarily get jobs if they don't show likability. I know it sounds strange. You think, well, this person is a lawyer, they're MBA, they're great. If they can't interview, they're not going to move forward. So think about that. So even with all these different backgrounds, what they're looking for is some sort of relevance, right? If it, for example, is aerospace, uh, Angel, they might say, for example, so Angel, tell me about yourself. You're looking for this entry-level role. You start out with, um, ever since I was young, I really followed aerospace and I, I looked at everything from aviation to aeronautics and had a strong understanding of what went into aerospace. So um, I, I'm currently getting a degree doing this, this, and this, but I'm targeting a role in aerospace as I think I could add a lot of value. I could contribute to an entry-level role with my project management skills, uh, my strong ability to organize uh, and to communicate and, and, and collaborate with others. You don't have to have a ton of experience. You just have to bring in something about aerospace, if it's medical. You say, you know, medicine is really important. And let's say it's medical device. Um, medical devices have, have saved lives. And uh, my mother, you could say, you know, I have a, someone in my family who has a, a pacemaker, a medical device. And that really got me interested in how I could work with a medical device company to help inform potential patients of the value of that. And so uh, I've taken a series of roles. Um, project management related and, and sometimes retail related to really get a strong understanding of business. And, and, and also I do some research on the industry. So I think I could be a value to this medical device firm. So you see what I'm talking about? It's like you're tying in your interest in whatever experience you have so far, even the classes you've taken into a story. And I call it a career narrative. Some people call it an elevator pitch. But I, I consider it a career narrative, and it's what's unique to you. So, Vanessa, I've seen you the entire time here. You're the number one person on the screen. So I'm going to pick on you right now and have you, uh, what kind of field are you interested in? In education. Education. Okay, great. And what kind of role might you be targeting? In the future, maybe as a college counselor. Great, great. Okay, so yeah, keep 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 this on. Okay, so... I'm interviewing, let's pretend I'm interviewing for a college counselor at UCLA. So Vanessa, uh, nice to meet you. Do me a favor and uh, tell me about yourself. Walk me through your resume. Hi, um, I completed a psychology degree at UC Davis. I have experience as a summer camp counselor and an internship at a nonprofit um, organization um, that helps with college students. And um, I've had experience as a research assistant. Great. So why would you be a great uh, counselor at UCLA? I think I'd be a great counselor since I am since I am a first generation college student. So I think I would be able to deliver um, resources and help to connect with other students. That was terrific. You were volunteered, Vanessa. You did a great job. And I think that's exactly it. You talked about something relevant. You were able to weave in your experience. You talked about what you did and you did it in a likable way and it was concise and to the point. A lot of the first rounds these days, and this has changed even in the last two years, is that people are being called upon to do what we're doing right here. First round interview often is by Zoom. Why? It's more cost effective. Um, it's shorter. It is one of these things where they can get a lot more in per day. They meet with people a half hour instead of an hour. Uh, Sakina says she didn't stutter. She spoke with confidence and she used verbs to describe the experience. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. This is all what we're going to talk about today.
here's what it comes down to is I want you to think about a few things when you're thinking about the narrative, just like the versions that you heard. You think about first is you want to engage the listener in two minutes or less and tell this compelling story of what you've done. And like I said, don't think that because you did something that seems really small, like we all did things that maybe were small. Like I said, uh, at 15, I got a special permit to sell shoes at a department store. 16, I was a theater usher. So all these things you think, well, it doesn't mean anything, but it did. It helped me learn business. It was the business of, in one case, landscaping, the, the sod. When I worked at a movie theater, I looked and saw how much money was being made by where? The popcorn stand, the candy stand. And I started to realize that's where the real business is. And I started talking to my boss and I said, how does, how does this theater really make money? And he said, well, we don't make that much from the movie. We depend on the popcorn and the candy sales. And that was at 16, like an aha mo moment to me. I said, oh, wow. Like I didn't understand how important that was in the business of, of that. So you, Lisa, can I pick on you? Have you, have you had any jobs so far that you can talk about? Yeah, I have. Um, I currently work at Starbucks. And now there is a huge multinational corporation. What have you learned at Starbucks? I think that I've learned mainly time management, a lot of time management. Um, there's a, a schedule that, that needs to get done. So we have to be out at a certain time and in at a certain time and everything has to be done within um, that time. So I think that that's the biggest thing that I've learned so far is just uh, making sure everything is done, is, is executed correctly. Yeah. And smoothly. That is a great thing to learn. And that's something to talk about. Right, Elisa? But what yeah. else are you learning about? How much do they charge for a, a latte? Like a cafe latte, mm -hmm. a grande? Anywhere from standard is like $6.52. And then it can, with customizations and everything, go all the way up to 11 <laughs> Yeah. And yeah. how much do you think it really costs? Just like the theater, what I learned when I was a uh, theater usher, how much do you think it actually costs the business? Like $3 maybe. If that, maybe under a dollar. <laughs> Now, this isn't to say they're ripping everyone off because they're obviously they have to buy a lot of coffee and they have to buy a lot of things. But you start, I think every job that you have, you can learn something about the business, right? You learn about what sells the most. What else do you learn? A foot traffic? Oh, foot traffic. Um, you also learn what works for the company, what doesn't, what drinks were a flop and which, you know, were, were uh, hyped up and actually worked. Like pumpkin spice lattes? Yeah. And so what are you learning about trends? You're learning about consumer tastes. You're learning about, um, do, you, do you work as a barista? Do you talk to people as well? Yeah, as a barista. And then I talk to people as a cashier as well. Great. And so what you're learning there is really going to, believe it or not, probably last throughout your lifetime. Doesn't seem like it, but you're learning how to manage relationships. If someone comes in and they're kind of irritating and crabby, you are kind of calming them down and saying, hi, we'll get to work on your coffee right away. And like you're, it's customer service, right? Yes, customer service, a lot of de-escalating situations. So with all that, don't you think you're learning a lot? Definitely, yeah. Every day is different. Every day is new. So thank you for sharing that. I might come back to you in a bit. But what I want to encourage all of you to do is whatever jobs that you've had, you want to try to think of it from the perspective of, what am I learning that is that maybe I can use in the future? I can pull out, you know, in this role, I'm learning about customer service and uh, consumer trends, how to manage relationships, uh, how to deal with a difficult customer. All those things are really good. So, uh, Evan, uh, can I have you jump on for two seconds? Yes. All right. So what kind of jobs have you done so far? Uh, I haven't done any jobs, but I guess I have a side hustle of selling sneakers. Okay. That, that's still, even a side hustle counts as experience. And what have you learned about selling sneakers? Like uh, I guess, Jordans? yes, it's supply and demand. And it's like risky to buy shoes that no one will really like because it would be hard to sell and you're kind of <laughs> losing money there. Yeah, that's, that's genius. I mean, Evan, so you are learning business. Yeah. Sometimes the hard way, right? 
Yeah. So to your point, Evan, you're learning about supply and demand, consumer trends, maybe researching what you've done. I yeah. would argue that everyone's learning something in whatever you do, whether it's a side hustle and so forth. So uh, something to really think about there. Hey, Melanie, uh, let me jump to you. Will you uh, tell us a little bit about your experience? Hi. Um, hi. Um, well, much like Kevin said, I haven't had a very like technical job, but I have had side hustles. Uh, my mom has like a, she takes care of kids and okay. I help her as well as I help edit like um, classmate papers and I charge for it. So yeah, I do those two things. Well, now I don't because I'm not in school right now, it's still summer, but I have done that for, I started doing it since like freshman year of high school. That's great. That's the business of education. I mean, education is something that we all want and we know we'll get ahead with. But Melanie, that's a great example. So what do you think that you're really learning in these roles? Because it sounds like you're um, learning a lot. Yeah, so I think that, I think the most I've learned was um, helping or work alongside with my mom because I learned how to communicate from like the perspective of a worker and then a parent because my mom is a parent herself, right? But she takes care of kids and I have to learn how to communicate. If there was like some sort of an argument, I have to translate it and be able to put it like, oh, these two kids had an argument, but this is how I got, this is how I got resolved and stuff. But working on the editing papers, I have learned how to like present my work and give value to my work because to many people, editing isn't hard. However, it does take a lot of time and a toll on me because I have to find a balance between doing my paperwork but also editing other people's paperwork. So, yeah. Fantastic, Melanie. Thank you for sharing. So as you're hearing, everyone I'm calling on is doing something, whether it's a side hustle, helping something, you're learning something about the business side of education. It's still a business, right? Do you think you're learning some business skills, Melanie? I think I am. <laughs> yeah, which is why I'm surprised I never, business never caught my attention. But yeah, I well, think I, I think, really am. I think- you're learning more than you think. And that's why I'm going to challenge each one of you to whatever you've done, side hustle, working for the family, babysitting, there is a business to what you're doing. And there's, um, there, there are no bad jobs. There are only jobs that we don't learn enough from. Like when I look back um, and, and, you know, I was from Wisconsin and the, the best paying job was working at, uh, during my college years at the local paper mill. And so I, uh, put on jeans and a t-shirt and these was over these paper machines with, with uh, these large wrenches. And it was hard work, but it really taught me the value of teamwork and being precise. And also to your point, Melanie, this idea of relationship management, resolving conflict. These are all things that I would challenge all of you to talk with each other about. And also um, Olivia and Kim and the whole team to, to really be able to, to say, um, what is it that I am learning? How do I um, articulate the value of what you've done? Kim, can I have you jump in here? Our, our motto, of course, uh, what are some of the things that you've heard that you know this group is really good at? I, I think um, more than anything, I, I feel like the trend right now with a lot of students is kind of like what, what they've been saying is they're uh, for lack of a better term, they're go-getters, right? They're, um, yeah. they're, we're starting to see that students are um, kind of moving to doing things um, that are not necessarily like traditional jobs. And they're trying to find something that's like, um, that they enjoy doing that they can make you know money out of. And I think that's that's a really interesting thing to see right now because I, um, you know, in the past we've seen students say like, you know, we, again, having traditional jobs, like whether it's part-time or full-time, but now, you know, we're hearing more of like, oh yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I've noticed that I'm really good at this. And so I'm, I'm taking that skill and I'm trying to showcase it to others so that I can, you know, put some, some monetary value to it, if that makes sense. That's perfect model. And I agree it hundred percent. In fact, I would say a lot of people here are showing entrepreneurial spirit. And that is going to be helpful no matter where you are, right? Coming up with ideas, whether you work in education or film or medical device or any of the industries that you mentioned earlier, there is a business to it. Yes, there's a public need for education and, and working for a nonprofit, all very meaningful, but you got to keep the lights on and um, 
you know, just the fundraising that, that Allie does is so important. She was one of our top people here at Anderson. And so this idea of being able to, to keep the finances going at uh, all institutions, whether it's UCLA Anderson Fulfillment Fund, another school, so very important. So I would challenge you to start, look at this right now, that to talk about whatever it is that you've done before you kind of draft that narrative, think about who, who is it your audience you're talking to? Is it, is it the next person that you meet that you're interviewing for? Or is it maybe practice these with each other? Think about what do you want to be known for? Uh, what's your passion? What motivates you? What are your accomplishments? Like, even if they're not huge accomplishments in your view, they are representative of, as Moto said, being a go-getter. People like to hire likable go-getters. Kim, would you agree? Yeah, I definitely agree. I, I was going to say like students are being so innovative about what they're doing and super creative about thinking of different ways of how to make like side income, right? And that in, in itself is their own business and their own hustle. And I have a lot of respect for that. So it's it's really cool mm -hmm. to hear students like doing some side labeling thing, like, you know, with an art, um, cleaning, detailing cars. I mean, baking on the side there's so many different things that I'm hearing and it's it's really awesome to see especially um within you know our students thank you Kim and it is all valuable it's how you package it how you talk about whatever those things are if you're selling shoes and you're finding out about supply and demand great then you learn a lot so this is a couple of the options this is by far not the only way to do it, but you could say, oh, I'm currently a student at Cal State Northridge, or I'm a recent graduate from, from UC Davis. In addition to my studies, while I was going to school, um, I did uh, counseling and this and this, and in this role, I really kind of was able to, and this is what you want to think about. What, what did you help your group or company or school achieve? Did you improve a process? Like, how did you make a mark, even if it was little? Did you, um, and I call it, what I call it is, and Ally knows this, I call it the magic eyes. What did you improve? What did you increase? What did you identify? And whom or what did you influence? If you can put that in there, it sounds even stronger. So, and if, for example, you say, uh, in my role, um, I, I did some side hustles doing this, this, and this, but now I'm targeting this role in a medical device company where I think I can bring my entrepreneurial spirit to this company in a junior sales role or whatever it is. But here's, I italicize this word for a reason. Why is contribute so important? Because they're trying to see how you'll click with the company, how you'll be able to, because companies are always wanting to improve instead of staying at the level they're at. So how you can contribute to that improvement of the company. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, what a sharp group. Absolutely. Thank you. And it is, if you can talk about this, each and every one of you, whatever you're interviewing for, think about ending with, and here's how I can contribute. Because where a lot of people of all ages make a mistake here is they sit there and say, well, what I really want is this, and what I really want is that, and this is what I want at this stage in my life. Yuli, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with saying, I want this and I want that? That you're not saying how you're going to do it. Yeah, you're not saying how you can add value right? So if you can say, I can contribute this way, or I can add value to this firm or this school this way, even better. And people go into this mode, they'll say, oh, why do you want to work here? What they really are asking, always remember this one, is they're not really saying, why do you want to work here? They're really saying, how can you contribute? It's kind of a trick question to a degree. So this is one thing that you can do to look at um, this and, and you know, certainly your great team can work with versions of this, but you're trying to say things like, well, I achieved this. I gained a lot of insight into this. Um, and now I'm interviewing for roles because I think I can contribute. That's what people are coded to hear. So I created this little checklist and I did it for the MBAs, but it applies no matter where you are in your career. And this, you, you want to think about as you're practicing this with each other, and I'd like to hear a few more people think about, does, does it tell a compelling story of some a value? In other words, some of the things that you did? And do, do, do people leave it uh, saying, oh, wow, that's, this is a really sharp person. Like we, we need to give this person a certain look. 
Does it involve any interesting story? Like uh, uh, while I was at Starbucks, I worked a lot in conflict resolution, meaning we had some unhappy customers that didn't get the coffee that they wanted. So I was the first person that was able to deal with that, make them happy. And what that means is going forward for your company, and again, a big part of it's you're translating what you do to whatever you think this company is about. So whatever your stories are, there's no story too small. It's more a matter of what did you learn? Does it generate interest into you? Part of it is, as we've seen from Vanessa's version, adding some energy and some enthusiasm. Uh, does it end strong? I had two, three mock interviews today and they were really good, really good. And then at the end, the person said, okay, and that's why I'm here. And when we went back over the recording, I said, you know, you were doing so well until you said, that's why I'm here. So one of the things that you want, want to think about is looking down into, you know, have you translated that experience? If you worked at Starbucks, you learned a lot of things, but you're looking for, let's say you want to work for um another uh, organization, you say, well, at Starbucks, what I really learned was customer service, understanding the needs of the customer, upselling, hey, would you like a, would you like a pastry with that? Or one of our egg sandwiches, you know, whatever it is that you're learning, believe it or not, it is very visible. So think about pulling anything and is your new and improved career narrative, I call it a career narrative, some people call it elevator pitch, is it forward-looking? Do they hear, oh, okay, this is relevant to me? And um, is it two minutes in length? So these are all strong answers. So I'm going to jump back into this. Do you, do you mind giving us a, a potential organization that you might like and do your story just really briefly? A production company, okay. uh, Sonny. Great. So I would guess that it, do you also do project management in what you do? No, not entirely, not necessarily. Okay. Something that a lot of people do do, but what you probably do do with your background involves building relationships, managing relationships. Earlier, I heard some of you talk about the verbs that you use. It's so important. And I shared a few things with your team uh, earlier that they might be able to share with you about these action verbs. They make a difference in your background. So, so you like, Let's say this is a production company. Uh, can you pick one out right off the top, like a small production company? Yuli, nice to meet you. Uh, glad to have you here at Happy Madison. Why don't you tell us about your background? I, my name is Yuli, Yulisa Mendez. I am a fourth year UC Davis student. I'm a sociology major um, with a minor in communications and Chicano studies. And um, I worked for Starbucks for four years. And while in, my career at Starbucks, I was able to upsell, make um, upsell new drinks and provide advertisement for new drinks for people. Um, I was also in charge of making the board designs that attract customers. And um, I was able to make the moment right with every cup that I served. Great. So why do you think that you'd be a good fit for Happy Madison in this production company? I think that I would be a good fit because I provide solutions to hard to um difficult situations challenges. difficult situations and um i can think on the spot on um and pick up where people are angry at and i can fix it immediately great i thought it, i i saw great energy great smile and you might think well does it make a difference to smile absolutely I mean, I've worked with senior level executives that are like this. I worked for the last four years ago and this, this, this. And, and I show the video to them later and like, oh my Lord, that's terrible. It's, it's bringing, yes, confidence. When she didn't know she didn't stutter, she continued with more example. Fantastic. And Leslie, right? She smiled through it. Very little hesitation. Yes. Boy, I'm getting lucky with the people I'm picking on. And both of you are, are fantastic. What else did you see? Think, think for a second about it because both of these examples are, are terrific. Warm personality. Yeah, absolutely. Wouldn't you want to hire both of the people today? I know I would. And because they're likable, they're problem solvers, they're smart, they're dynamic. You, you, you feel good around them. And that's one of the things why I said likability is so important. 
how could she can contribute? Yeah, she translated. Thanks, Leslie. They, she can tra translated what that meant. And we all know in entertainment, there's no shortage of big egos. So yeah, I've worked with many. And I'll tell you that um, there's a lot on the line. So you got people under a lot of stress. And yes, she contributed. What else did you see? What else makes Yuli such a, a, a great, uh, how'd you like the Starbucks example? Reliable, yeah. Can, can you trust her? Do you think that she's used to dealing with, let's say, confidential conversations? You got a, a big movie producer who's got an embarrassing situation. You trust Yuli, right? Because she smiles and you can just say that she would handle something and not make that person look bad. What else? What else would you say? Because I agree with what you said, Angel, uh, and, and Martin as Leslie, this idea of decision making, upselling, right? To be able to sell is not a bad thing. We all sell something in some way. Um, and it's influencing skills. And with a sociology background, it's about being reliable and them imagining you as a quick learner too. All of you are clearly quick learners. And if people hear in the attitude that you're going to be a good fit, they're going to want to hire you. So excellent job, Julia. Thank you very much. I know these intros are, um, they're a little hard to do, but what I'm going to encourage you to do is practice these with each other. Use your phone to record. This is an age where nobody at any age, whether they're your age or my middle age, we have no excuse to not practice it. And you, uh, both Yuli and Vanessa just did it off the top of their heads. Phenomenal. So David, thanks for volunteering. All right, fantastic. So what kind of uh, uh, job might you want to target? I would say like, like multimedia or like even being like a cord, like an art coordinator okay. uh, or like working within fashion or photography. Okay. Great. Can you think of any company that you've heard of that might be interesting that would take you right out of school? Let's let's make it easy. Uh, to, let's say Nike to start out with. Okay. All right, David. Uh, great to speak with you today. Again, everyone listening in to what David talks about, I'm going to ask him to tell me about myself and why would you be good for their creative production group at Nike? So first of all, David, tell me about your background. Yeah, so I'm a recent graduate from UC San Diego. I got my degree in sociology and minored in design. Um, and during my time at UCSD, I was working as an art production assistant uh, with a company called Art Power. And essentially we just got to work with the artists and performers at the school um, and kind of just helping out with like event management. Um, I'm also a freelance photographer, so I have experience in Adobe Photoshop, Lightroom. Um, and as a kid, I've always been interested in the arts. Uh, I've always been interested with how like technical these art projects can get. Um, and I definitely see myself being a role in a company like that. Great, so why would you be a good fit for our uh, creative production group starting out probably as an assistant? Why would you be a great fit for us here at Nike? Yeah, so like I mentioned with prior work experience, I feel like uh, working at Nike uh, would not only help me propel grow as an individual, but also be able to contribute uh, to a company like Nike and give back with the skills that I have. Okay, great. So um, we've got about six minutes left. That was terrific. Uh, what did you think about David's energy? You're very centered, very believable. You're clear in your experience, multiple examples. Yes, so specific. Calm, wasn't jittery. Yeah, look at that. So everyone today i i got very lucky and i gotta tell you i've worked with mbas that aren't half as good as you guys are today and if, if there's one thing that hopefully you'll take from today's workshop great job david i mean david how did it feel did it feel fluid and did it did it did it make you feel confident to put it all together yeah i would say also a little nervous but i think definitely as like i started flowing i feel like it became a lot easier um and not just that like being able to like use the things you talked about right now in this presentation and connecting with my own story. Great, absolutely. And, and I'll just, the unique use of childhood memory, which we can all relate to something like, yeah, from my childhood, this happened, this happened, that got me, uh, it's been a lifelong passion. Uh, yeah, you, you truly look the part because you can see the creativity in your shirt and you're, you're, you're very, 
you can tell that you're you're very detail oriented, even in the, the way your beard is perfectly done. So all these things are great, prepared, professional. And in the end, I think you're all going to be surprised, but if you have a good story, you practice it with each other and with your great team at the Fulfillment Fund, what you're going to do is record it with each other. So when you do have job interviews, you tell that compelling story of value, like the ones that you've heard today, which leverage any background, any interest. And as long as it comes back to how you can contribute, you're going to be surprised how well you do. Good, good, good. Well, best of luck out there. Always a pleasure. Ali, nice to see you. And thanks for, the, oh, thanks for the thumbs up. Appreciate it. And let's stay in touch. We can always do an interview workshop in the future. Thanks, everybody.